the review for the worst Spider-Man movie ever made has been cancelled. I'm sure you understand. Please enjoy this replacement as your feature presentation. Oh, hi, NC fans. We got the results of the test back. You definitely have April Fools. While a few things will be different for the time being, it's business as usual with a new nostalgia critic every week. So, sit back, relax, and enjoy the end of Spider Month. I love this job. Thank God we're done with Spider Month. Doing this song has really sucked ass. Did we ever run even once? Nope, just own it and be a dunce. Oh, fuck! Let's never do this again. Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic Guy. Remember it's- What the hell just happened? <laughs> I've done it! Doc Ock? I've crossed dimensions to finally get my revenge on Spider-Man. Well, that's not cool. You messed up my location! Do you know how crazy people get if that backdrop changes? Silence! Okay. According to my calculations, Spider-Man should be in the corner of your office right now. Wrong there, Doc Schlock. Oh, wait, he's just a hint over. Oh, yeah, that checks out. Perfect! Torture him with all your might. Dude, I'm not doing that! I have a review to film and get in the way! Yeah! Just do your review exactly as planned! What? Why would that torture him? Because I could never capture the actual Spider-Man, so I just made a humanized version of The Amazing Spider-Man 2. What? He's the humanized version of Amazing Spider-Man 2? We're gonna have so many sequels. This will be the best start to a cinematic universe yet. Oh, now I get it. Hats off. This is very evil. I know. Just review the film normally and I'll finally have my revenge on Spider-Man. You mean the humanized version of The Amazing Spider-Man 2? That's 15 syllables. Spider-Man, that's three. So much easier. I didn't think of it that way. I'm sorry. I accept your apology. After that, can you put my universe back the way it was? <laughs> we'll see what happens. Oh, right. We'll see what happens. So, I'm a big hit, right? Everybody loves me? Sit down. I am sitting down. Sit down in a more depressing way. That'll do. After the respectable success of Amazing Spider-Man, it seemed like Sony had a reboot that could possibly get some traction. So, what did they do? What every idiot studio at the time did, they tried creating a cinematic universe! 2014's Amazing Spider-Man 2 was supposed to be the start of several spin-off movies as well as at least two more sequels. This meant they didn't need those pesky writers who combine social stress and psychological pain with epically fantastic elements. That's not what Spider-Man is, stupid! No, no. Bring in the dicks who did the Transformer films, Legend of Zorro, and nail their own cinematic universe with The Mummy. And let me tell you, this feels like a script from the dicks who did the Transformer films, The Legend of Zorro, and Dark Universes Part 1 of 1. While Spider-Man 3 certainly did a lot of wrong, it at least felt contained in the same universe as the other two. This one feels like five different styles from five different movies, and none of them I want to see have a cinematic universe. So, how could a more gritty and down-to-earth Spider-Man go to the only Spider-Man movie to get a rotten score on Rotten Tomatoes? The, the only one to get a rotten score? Yeah, but that's just from people who like movies. That doesn't help. Okay, it's from people who hate movies. That's somehow worse. Okay, just shut up, do as I say, and we'll get through this, alright? Hey, that's what we were told every day on set. Let's wrap up Spider-Month with The Amazing Spider-Man 2. The film opens with Peter's parents leaving him with his aunt and uncle after their house is broken into. Oh, sorry, that was the first movie. Let me try this again. <clears throat> the film opens with Peter's parents leaving him with his aunt and uncle after their house is broken into. Yeah, we kinda already know this. Next you're gonna remind us that they died in a plane crash. <laughs> you have 80 million subplots in this! We don't need a- Previously on Spider-Man. I mean, did it go without saying they were murdered and didn't die in an accident? Although, given their response time, maybe it was just incompetence. We're gonna be alright, okay? You see me? Nice warning, honey! Up behind you would have been nice! Haha, <laughs> too late! The shitty script's uploaded! They're gonna make a movie out of this turd! After that wasted seven minutes, which doesn't sound too bad, but trust me, you'll wish they used it more wisely. We see Spider-Man, played again by Andrew Garfield, giving some pretty kick-ass swinging scenes. <laughs> 
I'm glad they finally hold on these shots long enough as it's the closest I've ever felt in any of these movies to feeling like I'm swinging in the air. They're really well done and deserve a lot of attention. The film also appears to be more colorful and lively compared to the last one, with a new good-looking spider suit, plenty of bright imagery, and a pretty fun action sequence stopping the rhino, played by a completely wasted Paul Giamatti. No, not just underutilized, I think he was legit wasted. <laughs> There was a tasting last night, yes. Who's robbing precious cargo? Hey, my name is Spider-Man. You can call me Webhead. You can call me Amazing. <laughs> Not a shaker. Well, this is a legit funny moment. Let's cut to all the lives he could have saved if he wasn't doing his comedy store routine. <laughs> well, liners are fine, but save people first. Heads up, watch out. Eh, not that one. You can put him back. You all right? Just Spider-Man. This is Max Dillon, played by Jamie Foxx. He's a nobody. I'm aware of this because he verbally clarifies he's a nobody. I'm a nobody. You're somebody. Well, that villain set up, let's go to another subplot. Disappointing ghost memes. That's not the only distraction. We have Gwen Stacy, played again by Emma Stone, in a strange montage giving a graduation speech about bad foreshadowing. I know we all think that we're immortal. What makes life valuable is that it ends. So don't waste it living someone else's life. I guess what I'm saying is that burial site over there looks really nice. Back to me being alive! Because even if we fall short... Egg too soon. What better way is there to live? Spider-Man stops the rhino, or... whatever he's doing to him here. <laughs> this is not it! You know his frown flipped as a perfect Joker smile? All joy will dim when he leaves acting. And he makes it just in time for graduation. Aunt May, played again by Sally Field, congratulates Peter, but the guy known for giving long-winded rants has kept silent again with his disapproving look. I feel like every look Garfield gives in this movie is his first reaction to a Tobey Maguire meme. Okay, I promise that's the last Maguire meme joke. No, I don't. We get the classic will-they-won't-they they stuff between Peter and Gwen, which, if this was the other films I would hate, but these two not only talk honestly about what they're going through so they can figure out their problems like smart people. It's my father, isn't it? I promised him that I would keep away from you. How can I do this? What does that, what does this make me? But they also have legit chemistry, maybe because they were dating in real life when this was being filmed. Also, Mark Webb did romances before doing these movies, so it kind of makes sense that these would be done well. Even if they do kind of distract from uh, essential movie plot points. I can't lose you too. No, because you can't lose me. We can't be together. Hey, remember Uncle Ben? Maybe I should find his killer. Nah, let's do this Edward Enigma thing instead. Spidey, but is someone celebrating a birthday today? That's why you're here. You remember my birthday. I'd like to thank the Academy for forgetting about this performance. Yeah, Jimmy Fox is a great actor and comedian, but this film highlights neither of those. He's just every obsessed geek character you've seen in a million movies. Nothing about him stands out because there's not enough time to give him anything that stands out. You know, Spider-Man saved my life one time. He said he needed me. I gotta tell Peter not to save everyone. Sometimes if a truck is heading towards him, let nature take its course. We're introduced to Dane DeHaan as Harry Osborn, because we're a half hour in and we still don't have all our main players yet, who's visiting his father Norman, played by Chris Cooper, because he heard Giamatti was embarrassingly sidelined, so he figured get in on the action too. Retroviral hyperplasia. This is not how I imagined I would die. Yeah, did they ever find a cure for green goblinitis? Funny how he's only in this film a minute and I already wish he was the one flying around on the glider instead of this pipsqueak. But to his credit, Dane DeHaan is one of those actors who both gets worse and better the more you watch him. He's another one of those actors that nobody really talks like. What was dad thinking? I don't know how. That is the Osborne way. And I don't know why. Fairy godmother. I need his blood. Hi. He's a hybrid of Leonardo DiCaprio, Keanu Reeves, and every Culkin child known to man. I kind of love him the more I watch him. You're a fraud, Spider-Man! It gets even better when Peter consoles Harry after his father dies. Yeah, didn't you know they're like the oldest of friends, even though he was never mentioned in the first film? He's so in the dark about this Oscorp place, even though he knew the son of the owner of it! Dah, he just forgot about it. It's like living in Chicago, but never visiting the Sears Tower, and it's a person. 
and it gets even better. Just watch these two together. Dahan's acting style is so different from Garfield's that they have extreme chemistry and no chemistry at the same time. It's kind of fascinating. And then Europe, you know? I went to Europe. I saw you. You got a lady? That's a question. Uh, what's her name? Who is she? It's complicated. Yeah, I don't do complicated. Honestly, it's like Sam Raimi came in just to direct his scenes alone. <laughs> Dude, that whole model thing is so exhausting. I know. Now this is embarrassing, but I once wrote you a play in high school. <laughs> it doesn't match anything else. It's always odd, but it's always entertaining. So you're not that let down by the movie yet, right? I mean, the romance is good, the action is cool, and even Spider-Man has some touching scenes. This is a wind turbine. You make this? It's good as new, right? I'll walk you home. What's your name? Warning. I guess I did kind of forget some of the legit fun scenes in this movie. See? You don't have to focus on Max falling into a bunch of eels, getting electric powers and convenient dental work. Oh yeah, this dumb shit! Yeah, everyone remembers this dumb shit. Max comes back to life from being electrocuted in an experiment, which tone-wise matches perfectly with this next scene. <laughs> It's like a TV monster movie went to commercial for a dating app. We'll return to the TNT movie right after this. I didn't think I could meet anyone, but then Web Together introduced me to a girl I could really fall for. Well, she fell for me, but I'm getting too technical. The, my laugh that is laugh off the is table. Off the, you, got, you gotta figure out a more annoying laugh. <laughs> That's still adorable. <laughs> yeah, all right. Even though I praised the hell out of these two, Let's talk about some of their legit problems. You see, everything in the movie is always moving 20 things forward. So when you have a romance where they just kind of chat about random stuff, completely different from everything else in the film, you do start to feel like a third wheel watching them. No more of this little nose rub do you do. This? I don't think I have a day. What am I supposed to do? It's allergy season. You're just spitting in the face of my ground rules. I'm out. Oh God, just bang already. Max is transformed into Electro, who I have to say looks nothing like the comic, but does look pretty damn cool. No, stop! Don't do that! Get down on the ground into the gas! Why is that so hard to understand? <laughs> Even his reason for being evil is very basic bitch motivated. <laughs> Spider-Man tries to talk him down before fighting him. Again, I really feel like Garfield nailed the comedic, but still caring elements that made Spider-Man such a great hero. Minus that count. And even though this line makes no sense, I still get a laugh out of it. What's your name again? How could you forget me? I know it, don't tell me. It's Max. Is it Max? Yes. Again, I don't know what way that was intended to be funny, but it is funny. <laughs> We get another inventive and colorful action sequence as Spider-Man knocks Electro out and his ratings go up. What the hell does that mean? It means this movie isn't as bad as you're saying. Sure, there's a few hiccups here and there, but every Spider-Man movie has that. I'm gonna be okay. So is he destroyed yet? Hey, his soul doesn't look demolished. It's okay, it's okay. We're only halfway through the movie. Oh, you're only halfway through. Got it. You scared me for a second. Carry on. Do things get... Better halfway? It's a complicated question. Well, that gives me hope. But with a simple answer, no, it does not. Aww. So not only does Peter discover Gwen is moving away to England, and he becomes obsessed with finding out what happened to his parents again, while also looking for Uncle Ben's killer way, no, still nothing. But Harry discovers he's dying of the same disease as his father. This dialogue just flows. Yeah, right? Not really, Pete. I'm dying. But I think you can help save my life. He said that like he ran out of Fritos! I'm out. Pick some up. And I'm dying. But don't forget Fritos. I love Fritos, and I'm dying, but Fritos, and I'm dying. Harry says he thinks Spider-Man's blood can cure him as he can self-heal. Is that why he was getting cough medicine earlier? You know him. What? 
You took his picture. All right, that's still a thing. They literally text us J. Jonah Jameson's cameo. I can't believe I forgot. Gwen discovers they're trying to keep Max's connection to Oscorp a secret and hides from security, trying to track her down. This is the maintenance closet. This is the most cliched hiding place. This oh, is, I'm this sorry. is the stupidest hiding I didn't place. Take us to the Bahamas of listen, hiding places. Listen, I'm listen. so glad I introduced you to. Peter provides a pretty funny diversion for Gwen to escape, and we see where they're keeping Max. What killed the dinosaurs? The Ice Age! Actually, are you sure we're not in that movie right now? I'm here to study you, to understand what you are. See, here's the thing. This whole German mad scientist torturing Dr. Nightcrawler Manhattan here, I'd be fine with in a Spider-Man movie. If the whole movie was like this. You want to go for the crazy Guillermo del Toro, Terry Gilliam thing? Have at it. But this doesn't match with this doesn't match with this. And each one is bringing a full script's worth of content to the table. Even when a scene does take its time, you're so jolted by the fast pace of everything else, you can't get comfortable with it. Meaning you're less likely to let a scene sit with you. Like this one, for example, when he's talking to Aunt May. The truth is your parents left you here on our doorstep. Your Uncle Ben and, and I. Uncle who? Oh yeah, I will find his killer or not. I was the one, me, who has to take nursing classes with 22-year-old kids so I can pay for you to go to college, and I don't know how to do this. This emotional moment seems like a good time to work in that spy stuff again. Two government men came to see us. The genetics research that your father was doing with Norman Osborn was very valuable. See what I mean? These just don't go. It's like in Godfather if he was like, Look how they massacred my boy. By the way, the secret government information that spies might be asking you about, don't ever let them find the microchip. My boy! Later, Spider-Man drops by Harry's home to talk about using his blood to cure him. You talk to Peter? Yeah. I want to help you, Mr. Osborne. I really, really do. Now, Harry has no idea that this is Peter, but honestly, how couldn't he? Everything from his voice to his demeanor to how he holds himself. You can practically see his face that always looks like he just read a mean tweet from a McGuire fan. What kind of geniuses are you two supposed to be? All right, how much? Name it. You want a boat? You want a plane? Hmm, a spider plane does sound cool. Your blood can't make me die more, but it could do something worse. Peter says he won't give Harry the blood because it'll either kill him or make him too powerful. This makes no fucking sense. Okay, here's my theory. There's a later scene where Peter finds out his father's blood is the key to making a lot of these experiments work. And his father did this because he found out Oscorp couldn't be trusted as they wanted to weaponize what he was working on. I think that scene was originally written to go before this scene. Because it would give Peter a reason not to trust Oscorp and the son of the man who wanted to weaponize his father's work. But with those scenes in the order that they are, he just looks like a dick! Does he not trust Harry? He hasn't done anything to not earn his trust. And even if he did grow powerful, just keep him on the right path like he was your best friend. Say, that reminds me, you're best friends, aren't you? You're gonna let your best friend die because of, honestly, a lot of solutions to minor problems? So much of the goodwill built up in these previous scenes is being obliterated over not just a stupid choice, but a cruel choice. As the film continues, the bad scenes start to erase the good scenes that came before it. As, looky here, another villain is introduced. Yeah, not enough to make it on the poster, but he's a villain. Apparently, this guy makes it look like Harry hid Max and fires him from his duties. But it's cool, Felicia Hardy, oh yeah, Black Cat is in this, tells Harry about their secret lab below. Hey, gotta justify her in this somehow for that spin-off movie that's never gonna happen. Before they destroyed the spiders, they had the venom extracted. Where is it? Somewhere in the building. I know, because my father designed this building. Did you know a firecracker down the garbage chute will blow this place up? Peter also discovers a secret lab for himself. His father had an Oscorp location in an abandoned subway that... I guess Oscorp just forgot about! Unless his dad put that all together, which look at that fucking thing, no! And he discovers, like I said before, that Oscorp wanted to weaponize his experiments. Destined to find a cure, Harry frees Electro, saying he needs him. He zaps the guards and electricity some shorts, joining Harry's side. Remember me? Weirdly, no. 
Electro puts together, let's be honest, a fucking weak-ass suit. You look like the Fantastic Four member they hide behind Thing. And they force the new head of Oscorp to show him where the possible cure might be while Electro goes to kill Spider-Man. What is all this stuff? The future. Well, we know that's not true. He takes the cure made from the venom of the Oscorp spiders. Oh, now I get how that was gonna tie in. <laughs> Very clever. But as predicted, it has some side effects, giving even less of a fuck about your performance being one of them. You're making me hammy. You wouldn't like me when I'm hammy. Peter wastes the city's entire budget on bridge maintenance just to let Gwen know that despite her leaving, he still loves her. Spider-Man kidnapped that woman! He also lets her know that he's going to move to England with her. Boy, not much wind on those New York bridges, huh? I'm just gonna follow you everywhere. I'm just gonna follow you the rest of my life. Or, rest of your life would be more practical. I have an entire file of these jokes. The power goes out all over the city, but Peter and Gwen have an idea how to bring it back, while also stopping Electric Andros. Do you see me now, Spider-Man? Yeah, the rivalry has been so built up. What was his motivation again? I want to get that job! <laughs> oh, and get this. Two planes are about to crash into each other if the power's not turned back on. But literally nobody in the movie knows this, so it adds no extra tension. None of the main characters are on there, and we know it's not gonna crash. It honestly feels like it was added at the last minute because the climax wasn't exciting enough. With that said, this climax isn't exciting enough. The CG is not particularly impressive, especially compared to earlier. The shots and action are pretty standard. And then, you know, this dumb shit. Down came the goblin and took the spider out. Spider-Man, bet you never saw this guy. Again, great electro writing. What other great quips did he have? Die, Spider-Man, or I got you now, or... Die, Spider-Man. At this point, I think I would prefer you're the one who's out gobby out of your mind. At least I'd remember it. <laughs> when shows up, Leary gives the audience's facial reaction, and the two of them finally defeat Electro. Oh, and the two planes were saved, because I know that was at the height of your worries. See, that wasn't so bad. A little underwhelming and crowded, but it wasn't anything that bad. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Don't do this. Go back, go back, stay out of this movie! Oh, God. Oh, God, indeed. Not since Mila Kunis as the Wicked Witch, Rosie O'Donnell as Betty Rubble, or Vince Vaughn as Norman Bates has a famous character ever looked so... not right. You were my friend, and you betrayed me! Sometimes something can be so stupid it's funny. This is just so stupid it's stupid. Look at me! There's less than 20 minutes of the movie left, and another villain has been thrown into the mix. Arguably, Spider-Man's most famous villain, and he gets one-ninth of the movie to shine. Oh no. This is bad. This is very bad. Spider-Man fights Harry, slowly turning into Mr. Bean, but Gwen gets tossed, and Spider-Man's web... hand tries to catch her. As fans of the comic have deduced, and movie fans are tired of having hammered in, Spider-Man is unable to save her, and she dies. No, please, please. <laughs> so, cool, they got one of the biggest deaths in comic book history finally on the big screen. So why does it feel so empty? I don't want to see her go, I like seeing her and Peter interact but somehow this just doesn't feel warranted. Why? A couple reasons. First off, in the comic, this happened over a long-building rivalry. When Joker killed Robin in, god, any version of Batman, it's not done by a villain who just popped up, it's done by one who's been established for some time. It's a rivalry burning and burning and burning, and this was the final explosion it amounted to. Not, by the way, I'm the Green Goblin, what? Well, hey! Second, aside from that sloppy speech in the intro, the movie doesn't really support this happening either. Take Star Trek II. What's it about? It's about getting older but holding on to your youth, sacrificing to stay alive but facing the inevitability of death. Some things you can escape, others you can't. All these themes are spread out throughout the movie, so it makes sense when a main character dies in it. What's Amazing Spider-Man 2 about? Um, 
parent spies, gliders that millionaires shouldn't know how to use, rhino people, Navi nightlights. It's too cluttered to be about anything. The only other way it could work is if they did it to be more realistic, like Godfather or Game of Thrones. You know, the shock value adds to the realism. And I don't think this is a series that rides that much on that anymore. The tragedy is this is the second time a Spider-Man movie has botched this scenario, which means we're never gonna see this done correctly on the big screen because everyone's just too familiar with it. So, one of the most famous comic book deaths in history is just gonna have to stay in comic book history. Because it's forever ruined anywhere else. Wow. Wow. Yes! Oh that's it! Oh Squish him like oh a clump oh of God. wet Play-Doh! Oh really, that's the best squishing oh analogy you could come up with oh in this God. scenario. Oh God, this can't be happening. Uh, don't worry, it gets better. Really? No. <laughs> Months go by as Peter is too scarred to fight crime and the masked figure from the ending of the first film. No oh, shit, I forgot there's a masked figure at the end of the first film. You never find out who he is, it doesn't matter. Teams up with Harry and uses the weapons down below to form the sinister one and a half. I just so I kill you! I destroy you! Giamatti did think he was playing Gru in this, right? This is all just another bizarre minion spin-off. You are much shorter than I remember! I knew you'd come back. Yeah, thanks for stepping up for me. Looks like you got this, so I'll be taking off. <laughs> he attacks the rhino, and the rest is to be finished off another never. What? There's never another one? Nope. Amazing Spider-Man 2 was not really that amazing in a lot of people's eyes. The film by no means bombed, but it didn't make the money it was hoping for. Because of this, all future spin-offs and sequels were scrapped, and Sony finally made a deal to share the character with Disney. But this was supposed to be the big one, the trailblazer that launched a million universes. You got Tom Hardy burping in Venom. Nah, but I, uh, huh, really? Alright, so is this the worst Spider-Man movie? In my opinion, yes. Say what you want about 3, but it had themes and ideas, and it committed all the way to them, it just wasn't very good at doing it and got too crowded. This one also got too crowded, also wasn't good at conveying its ideas, but on top of that, it felt like a bad commercial for movies that didn't even exist yet. Ironically, it repeated a lot of the same mistakes as 3, except it didn't have that strange, unique voice to help it stand out. Because of this, we get a film that's not only crowded and confused, but also bland, forgettable, and at times, pretty boring. Does that make it one of the worst movies ever made? No. Honestly, I wouldn't even call it one of the worst comic book movies ever made. It has some cool action and good acting, but you always know where its loyalty lies. To franchising. You can franchise a series fine, but you have to be committed to a good story and ideas first. And those simply aren't in this one. It's too bad. I really like Garfield as Spider-Man and would like to have seen where the series would have gone if they had gotten more competent writers behind it. As well as a studio that focused more on getting one film right instead of the next five. So, despite it giving some good scenes, Amazing Spider-Man 2 still remains, in my opinion, the worst Spider-Man movie ever made. Ah, oh god! Oh god! Well done, Nostalgia Critic! You've ruined Spider-Man forever! You mean the humanized version of the Amazing Spider-Man? Uh, three syllables. Right. Now to ruin other versions of Spider-Man. I wonder if I can cast Jared Leto in anything. So long, plebeians! <laughs> oh god! Oh god! Oh god! Oh god! Oh god! This can't be happening! Oh god! It's all over! It's all over! Oh come on, it's not all over. Yes, it is. Everything's gone to shit, and I'm never going to get things back to normal. Nothing will ever be the same. Well, yeah. I mean, you're right. This will be a painful hit for you, and it'll affect more than you're probably aware. In fact, chances are you won't come out of this the same as when you went in. Are you trying to motivate me because you suck balls at it? Look, I'm trying to be realistic. Oh, good. That's just what I need now. You do! Because the truth is... You've been through worse. I mean, your history is filled with huge wins and great losses. And every time it looked like you weren't going to make it, you found another avenue to thrive in. Sometimes you had to stay out of the public eye for a while, but like anything special, people never forgot you. 
and in time, you'll learn how to grow something special within your limitations. Occasionally, even more special. Whenever it looked like every pathway was closed off, you found a way to slither through and become stronger on the other end. So yeah, you're gonna be out of commission. It's not fair and it's gonna suck. A lot. But you always find a way to get through it. You always find the will to be strong and inspire other people to be strong in the process. No matter what avenue you need to take. And you know why? Why? Because you're fucking awesome. I'm fucking awesome? And you remind people how fucking awesome they are. And fucking awesome feeds off of fucking awesome until there's so much fucking awesome in the world we don't know what to do with it! So you're gonna give up? Or are you gonna continue to inspire that awesome? I'm a perpetual awesome machine! Damn right you are! You may be down and out for a bit, but nothing can take away your goddamn awesomeness! Yeah! 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 We do know what we're really talking about, right? Of course. We're talking about motherfucking Spider-Man. Motherfucking Spider-Man! Motherfucking Spider-Man. So, what do we do now? Ooh! I haven't finished up Punisher yet. Eh, I never got into those Marvel shows. What am I supposed to say to that? And you guys went to some extreme measures to get that wall back. <laughs> hey everybody, Doug Walker here doing the charity shout out. And uh, once again, in light of everything going on, uh, we are doing another charity that we've done before. But you're probably hearing uh, a lot about uh, from talk shows and the news and people just saying, hey, here's how you can help out. Uh, we're doing Feeding America. Uh, this is a charity that specializes in uh, helping people who do not have food get food, uh, get them to food pantries and food banks. In fact, exact numbers, uh, well, <laughs> pretty close to exact, uh, over 200 food banks and over 60,000 food pantries uh, are, this organization helps uh, get food to. And uh, it, obviously the reason uh, we're doing this charity is that, uh, you know, we've had uh, the past couple of uh, help, you know, very much trying to stop spreading the coronavirus and helping those with the coronavirus. Uh, but this specializes in people that have been affected by it in a different way. Uh, if you've been watching, you know, the uh, uh, unemployment has just skyrocketed uh, because of the virus. So a lot of people are suddenly left uh, without a job, without much money, and everybody needs food. Everybody needs to eat to survive. So this is an organization that is always specialized in that. And right now they're really, really specialized in it because uh, they do such good work uh, they're like pretty much the best known uh, in pretty much this category uh, they, they just I mean you look at their website you look at their history it's, it's just wonderful work they've done and they are continuing to do great work so uh, if you can check them out if you can uh, look at their website possibly donate because uh, there's a lot of people struggling now pretty much everybody is affected by this so and if you're struggling fair enough I mean it's Still give a look, see if there's anything uh, you can give because it really will make a huge difference. Everybody needs to eat. So take a look at the site and see what you can do. Thank you so much.